Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host. I'm pruning peppers today, and as promised, and either the Voodoo Garden episode or practice, I get I get them all mixed up. But uh, on one of the episodes, I mentioned that I'm growing some plants indoors this year in the Voodoo Garden, starting them very, very early. Like I think I started my plants in December, peppers and tomatoes, so that I could get them ready for spring. I know this sounds really kind of weird, but I'm comfortable with that. Uh, most people will start uh, their plants, their peppers, tomatoes, things like that. They'll start them indoors about maybe four to six weeks before their uh, expected last frost date or the date that you plant them outside. That way it gives them time to sprout, grow a little bit, get a little bit sturdy so that they can handle being outside. Well, I used to do that. I used to do that all the time. And then I thought about it. I thought, why doesn't anybody start them even earlier than that? If you have the lighting, in order to grow, start them from seed and grow them a little bit, why not grow them a little bit longer? And uh, so that's what I started doing. And that's what I do all the time now. I start them very, very early. I give them the biggest head start I possibly can. And I practically have adult plants by the time it's time to plant them outside. So my theory, my, my actually it's not a theory anymore, my practice, because I've done this. Uh, what my practice is I grow them from seed, I uh, grow them and prune them and shape them and get them all prepared so that when I plant them outside, they're practically adult plants and they have the best possible root system, the strongest possible stem system, and a good start and shape to get going in the spring. And that way I spend less time on them actually growing up in the garden and then putting out fruit. I skip that growing up part. They just start putting out fruit almost immediately. So I get a longer production. And generally what will happen in everywhere I've, I've grown peppers and tomatoes and other things is in the spring, they get the, in the early spring, they get the growth. And then in late spring, early summer, you start getting production. Well, in midsummer, the temperatures start getting really, really hot in a lot of areas. So what will happen is pepper flowers will start dropping, the fruit will start dropping, and people wonder what's going on. I used to wonder that too. Turns out, in the very heat of the summer, a lot of plants go through a lot of stress because that's survival mode. That is very hot. You go sit outside all day and see how you feel. These plants, what they're doing is they're aborting all their flowers and fruit and just going into survival mode so that they can live. That is their main thing, is to live to produce. So they've produced the first crop, you've harvested that. What they're gonna do is they drop all their flowers, they survive, and then I suggest people water, gently fertilize, not a lot, don't fertilize thinking that it'll make them uh, produce. Just maintain your plants in your garden. Then in late summer, they'll put out more flowers and put in a second crop. That way you get two crops. I've gotten up to three crops out of my peppers doing it this way. So you get more bang for your buck. Starting them early gets them a head start. I have more season to get more production. That's how I do things. I learned this in Minnesota where I had a limited growing season. I had to learn to adapt uh, in order to get the most bang for my uh, plant. Now what I'm doing today is I'm gonna show you some of these plants because something really weird happened. I started them out from seed. These are all peppers, by the way, except for this one. This is morning glory. And uh, I, I wasn't gonna show this because I wanted to go with just peppers and tomatoes, but it's kind of a rare occurrence. I have a morning glory I saved seeds for. Remember that morning glory I grew out in that tree, that big ash tree in my backyard? Well, I planted some morning glories in this hole in the trunk. I put some soil in there and I planted morning glories and they grew up and they vined out, produced flowers. And the, they're the most beautiful. I've seen a lot of morning glories in a lot of different colors, but this color is my absolute favorite hands down. I'm going to give you a good close-up shot. Oh, I'll just do it right now. I'll give you a good close-up shot of this and you can see what Ray's favorite color in morning glories is. That is a stunning color. The, the body of it, the main body is, I don't know if the camera is showing this properly, but the main body is a very dark, rich, rich, uh, purplish blue, uh, really dark blue, like a, a royal blue, but it has black on each section of the flower and kind of a, a rose color on the very inside and also take a look at underneath it. Most people don't look underneath the flower. Look at that. Where it's dark on the top, it's the exact opposite. It's a mirror image underneath. It's this beautiful, I don't want to touch it too much and, and break the flower, but it's this beautiful light rose color underneath. That's a stunning flower. I saved the seeds from the one I was growing outside. I planted it inside 
and they want a vine all over the place. So what I do is I chop back the vines and that's been forcing it to flower. It's already flowered once and I, I pollinated it and I think I might get a seed pod right here. And I actually, yeah, that is a seed pod. Yeah, I've pollinated it and I'm gonna pollinate this as well. I'm gonna grow these outside. I know they're invasive, but you know what? I want it to invade. I want something that I enjoy to invade. And I'm not gonna grow up my garden. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that stupid. I would say I'm not stupid, but <laughs> that's overshooting. I'm not that stupid. I'm gonna grow this far, far, far away from my garden. But yeah, it, it is, oh, well, see, I touched the flower and look what happened. Well, it was bound to die off. They are morning glories. They, they come out in the morning and then in the afternoon they close up. I wanted to give you a shot of that before we get on to peppers. There are very few things in the voodoo garden that can bring a smile to my face, more than seeing a morning glory in full bloom when I turn on the lights in the morning. That was a nice surprise. That was a very good surprise. It brightened up my day and I thought, you know what? That's going to not be here tomorrow, so I got to film today. So I wanted to make sure I got that on camera. And it gave me an idea. I thought, you know what? It's time for me to prune these pepper plants. I might as well do that as well. So today, I want to show you something. And uh, it's a good thing, and it was a weird thing. It's not a bad thing, but it was a weird thing. Um, these two plants right here are my older pepper plants. I started these from seed. One of them is called Yellow Monster. And if you don't know what Yellow Monster peppers are, Google it. I don't want to take an image off of Google and have somebody yell at me for stealing their image. So go to Google and type in yellow monster pepper and you'll be glad you did because these things are huge and they're beautiful. Not so much the plant, but the peppers. I don't know how big the plant gets, but the peppers are incredible and they got good reviews. So I decided to grow them and I, I bought some seeds and I have a yellow monster pepper and I also have this little tiny thing that um, is going to get to be bigger. It's called elephant ear pepper elephant ear pepper now i got the idea for elephant ear you know that thing is putting out quite the smell if you don't think that pepper flowers have a smell think twice this thing is putting out an aroma and that's what got me smiling right before i started filming i was sniffing i love i didn't when you know when i first started uh sniffing pepper flowers <laughs> it sounds like an injection huh when i first started sniffing pepper flowers i really didn't much care for the smell because i was expecting like a fragrant flowery smell but the more I smelled them, it grew on me. And now I can't get enough. I cannot get enough of this smell. The smell doesn't smell like peppers. It doesn't smell like a flower. I can't describe it. You're just gonna have to shove your nose into a pepper plant and smell it. Uh, I can't describe it. It's a, a, it's a, a jungle funky smell. It's fantastic. It is, it is something unique to itself. You got to try it someday. I love it. And uh, I've been pollinating these flowers. I have peppers on them. I want to show you that. But I grew these along with some others, but I don't have table room here. I grew these from seed and then they grew up and I grew them in my soil mix and that's worm castings, uh, ver uh, not, uh, cocoa peat, which is coir, and some vermiculite. And I grew them and I was fertilizing them with my organic fertilizer. Well, what happened was, don't know how, I don't even try to understand it. My soil became alkaline. And I don't know what happened. Well, you never know when you got farmers growing all kinds of nonsense and putting all kinds of chemicals into the ground. You never know what you're going to get when you get well water. But I don't, I don't know if that's their, their issue or my issue. All I know is my soil became alkaline and it's never done that before. So I don't know what caused it. All I knew was I had a problem and I got to get rid of it really quick. So in last, uh, last, was it last week's episode, I mentioned the vinegar. And so I started uh, trying to lower the pH, which will take it more to an acidic uh, uh, standard, which is what peppers and tomatoes like. They like slightly acidic soil. They don't like alkaline soil. If you have alkaline soil, what's going to happen is your pepper plants cannot utilize the calcium in the soil. You may have a lot of calcium, and this is a big issue. When it, uh, I sounded like John Cole there for a second. Big issue. Uh, you have a big issue in the summertime with uh, your leaves curling up, uh, blossom drop, all this funky stuff, uh, blossom end rot, things like that. Those are calcium issues. And a lot of people, and even some of the teachers out there will say, add some crushed eggshells, add more calcium. Well, you know what? That's not the problem. What the problem almost always, hands down, is, is that there's always calcium in your soil, only your plants are unable to use that calcium for one reason or another. Now, if your uh, pH, goes up too high, and this is a very simple way to think of pH. Up high is alkaline, down low is acidic, okay? Acid low, 
alkaline high, all right? And um, so if your soil gets too alkaline, it locks up the uh, calcium in the soil and your plants can't use it. You could have 10 tons of uh, uh, calcium in here and it does your plants no good. So what you gotta do is you gotta drop the pH. And that's why I'm, I tell people, take some cold coffee, water it with cold coffee. Well, I have a friend who's a, a gardening scientist who says that doesn't work. Well, I, with all due respect, I, I won't say anything about, about what he says because he has the science behind it. All I know is it worked for me. I used cold coffee, which is acidic because uh, coffee grounds are acidic until you brew your coffee. And then the acidity is uh, water soluble. It leaches out of those coffee grounds. So you can use those coffee grounds for compost and don't worry about the acidity. Whereas the coffee is mildly acidic. Now I water with cold coffee and that drops the acidity, uh, that brings it more acidic lowers the pH, not permanently, but a little bit temporarily, and that helps your plants. I'm talking Band-Aid here, okay? Any fool that thinks that they can use coffee as a permanent fix for something needs to, <laughs> needs to stop listening to Ray. No, but um, coffee will help, all right? So cold coffee does help, but a more permanent fix is I put in some vinegar in my water, and I started watering with that. Now, eventually what I'm going to do is start using some peat moss to uh, keep my soil a little bit more acidic. I don't like using peat moss because it's non-renewable, but I can use a little bit to acidify my soil. I will do what I need to do to keep my plants alive, okay? So if it means buying a small bag of peat moss, you know, it's not going to kill the environment. If I buy a little bit of it and I mix it in with my uh, soil mix, I think I'm going to be just fine. But what happened was the leaves got all curled up and stuff. I'm going to show you what a calcium deficiency looks like because this may happen to your plants. Come on over here and take a look at these and I'll show you what the deficiency looks like and what it looks like when you fix it because I got it all going on on one plant. Okie dokie, this is about as close as you're going to get, folks. This is the elephant ear pepper plant. And uh, as you can see, it's loaded up with flowers. Yes, it is. And I've been pollinating these flowers. Every day I just go through here and I just rub the flower like this, and you can see the pollen on here. I rub it like that, I rub it like that. Some folks will tell you that peppers are self-pollinating. Well, you never quite know, okay? I wanna make sure, because I have no pollinating insects in here, and I wanna make sure the pollen goes from the male parts to the female parts, because maybe it'll just, it'll, like if the plant isn't touched, maybe the pollen will just fall off, maybe it won't fall off, maybe it won't get there, who knows? I want to make absolutely certain. So that's why I'm doing this with my finger and pollinating and I'm getting peppers. Yep, I am getting peppers, check it out. They're not huge, but then again, neither is this plant. You can see this plant's only about maybe a foot tall. And it's got a couple peppers and of course it's got, actually it has three and it's gonna get some more. This plant has a history. First of all, it went through that nonsense. I'm gonna show you what that nonsense is. Right over here, look at this. See this leaf, how it's all curled up and gnarly looking and this one's a little bit like that. Then we got another one down here. Where, where to go? Oh, yeah, this one right here. See how it's all curled up like that? That's calcium. I mean, lack of calcium. If you see that on your pepper plants, that means you're getting low calcium. Now, what I did, I, I was going to throw this plant out. To be honest with you, I gave up on this plant. It was in a larger pot. It was in a 10-inch pot, which is what this one's in right now. All right? And I took it out. I just shook the soil out. Got, got rid of it, shook the soil off the roots, but you know what I noticed? The roots looked beautiful. They were a picture-perfect spread of roots. And I thought, you know what? This plant is really, really trying, and it's not its fault, it's my fault. So what I did was I got a smaller pot, and I put in some uh, uh, change of soil, and uh, I uh, put the plant back in there, repotted it, but I still didn't fix the alkaline issue. So what I did was I started watering it with the vinegar and uh, well vinegar water and well, uh, you still see uh, once you do that the old leaves are not going to fix themselves they will always look like that but newer leaves that are coming out this one this one here it's not putting out a ton of new leaves because it's putting out so many flowers right now but the new leaves are looking good and the color was all faded out on here it was just god-awful looking it looked really bad but look the colors coming out nice yep it's looking beautiful. So that uh, concoction that I had, it works really good. And I'm gonna show you one more while I have you here. While I have you here, I gotta show off my plants, okay? I gotta show them off. Uh, this one is the, what is this one? This is the yellow monster. 
And uh, yeah, it doesn't have monster sized peppers, but then again, when you're growing indoors, you're not gonna get the same results as outdoors. Well, at least I don't, because I don't grow them for show uh, when I grow them indoors. I just grow them to get them started. So what I've been doing is I grew this, and of course, like all my plants, I you know pinched it back, I'm making it grow side branches, keeping it as low to the ground. See, the main stem is only this tall, about maybe an inch long. And a lot of people, you'll see them grow peppers and they have this long middle stem. I don't go for that. I go for the short one and then it starts branching out. That's the same thing that I did with its friend over here. Look at that. That is a nice, strong plant. So when I take this outside in the spring, I plant it just maybe an inch deeper. This is going to be a low center of gravity. It's going to be a sturdy plant. When you have hurricane force winds like I do, that's a good thing. And it'll hold the production without snapping over. Now, I'm, what happened over here is at first I thought, well, all is lost. So I, I uh, marked these things off as a loss and I planted new seeds. And the new seeds that I planted, I gave them the vinegar water uh, concoction. And as you can see, no leaves are having that issue. None whatsoever. Exact same soil. Everything's exactly the same, only no issues with the leaves. These are lighter colored leaves because they're growing so fast and furious because I pruned it back. You can see that I pruned it back and this is all brand new growth. All the old growth is gone. I chopped it all off. We have all new growth on here. The same with this one. <laughs> and hold, I'm, I'm working as fast as I can, okay? I don't want anything to fall off the table. Hold on. And then this one here, look at that. Big, beautiful, dark green leaves. They're coming out nice. They're pruned back. When you prune back your plants, this is what I say, prune it way back and you don't have to be afraid. They will cut, look at that. Branches here and here. This is gonna be a nice, healthy plant. Which one is this one? This is called the Yellow Monster, okay? Yellow Monster here, this is the new one. And then here was the old one that I showed you with the smaller leaves. Look at how small these leaves are, okay? It's still coming back from the dead, whereas this one has larger leaves because it started out healthier. So uh, when, I, when I did this, this one was coming back so good, I was tempted to throw the old one out, but the old one started coming back, so now I have duplicates. And that's okay. I, I think I'd rather have too many plants than not enough. So I'm gonna let them all live. And uh, these ones, I'm gonna prune, shape, and when spring comes along, I'll decide whether it's this one or the older one that goes out into the garden. The other ones, I might just keep it, uh, in the voodoo garden and just grow them indoors, just for the heck of it. Look at this one. Is this adorable or what? These seeds were given to me by Ivana Plovsic. And uh, she's this crazy woman from Serbia. And I do mean crazy. I, you've known some crazy people, but this woman is insane. And it's a good insane. And um, uh, she, she's on my Facebook page. And uh, she's uh, kind of salty. If she was a man, she'd be a sailor. Okay? She doesn't pull any punches for anybody. She says what she thinks, and I think that's why I like her so much. She's not all vanilla and uh, toned down. She is a woman who definitely is not a, a, a shrinking violet. But from Serbia, she sent me these peppers, and she calls them little elf peppers. So I call this Ivana's little elf. And uh, the pepper plant is supposed to put out these little tiny spicy peppers all over the place. But look how compact this thing is. I, d I didn't do anything. I didn't prune this thing at all. Look at that. That thing's just nuts. It's growing really small, really compact. I'm gonna have to test these peppers to see what they taste like. But I wanted to bring this to your attention, uh, not to just show it off, but also to show you a little tip I have for you for when you are growing your plants. Sometimes you'll have, uh, when you're starting your plants, they're really bushy and you want them to get air in there and you also want light to get in there because look at this. This plant is shading the new growth down there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off some of these larger leaves, not all of them, just some of the larger leaves that are going to the inside. And what this is gonna do, oops, let me squeeze right in here. This is gonna let some light inside and it's gonna allow this new growth to get some light. Everybody's gonna be happy. It's not gonna harm the plant and everything is gonna grow better. Look at this big leaf right here, shading this. These plants always have way more leaves than they need. And early on in the season like this is the time that you wanna shape your plants and give them the best start. So 
If I leave these big leaves on here, it's going to shade these lower branches. They're going to be anemic and not be quite as healthy. So I'm hurting my plant if I don't do this. In nature, you know, it's a fair game, you know, uh, the survival of the fittest. We're not doing nature here. We're doing gardening, which has absolutely nothing to do with nature because these plants don't grow like this in nature. We're trying to get the best possible results for our short season out of plants that generally are not indigenous to our area. So we have to give them a little bit of a helping hand, and I really don't mind doing it. See? There we go. Gave everybody a little bit more light. Didn't damage the plant. Now what's going to happen is all of this inner stuff is going to grow better. This plant is going to do a lot nicer. There we go. Ivana's little elf. Okay, we're done with the peppers. Let's get on with the tomatoes. This one here is called Boxcar Willie. Boxcar Willie I grew many years ago up in uh, Minnesota, and uh, I just tried it. I uh, there's so many tomatoes out there, you really never know what you like until you try it. And um, one person's uh, good tomato may not be another person's idea of a good tomato. And so I really can't go by what people tell me because they may like one type and I may not like it. I may like one type. You know how it goes. So um, I tried Boxcar Willie. I don't know why. I don't remember how it started, but I tried it one year and I loved it. I loved it so much. This one I mentioned on the Praxis 55712 channel. This one plant, not this one, but this type of plant, Boxcar Willie, it grows with a pattern that I really like. It responds well to pruning. It suckers out nicely, but not too much. You don't want a plant that goes like nuts on suckers because that would just be crazy. And um, this one does really well. What I did was I pruned it really low to just be a short plant. Side suckers went out. This is what I did a few years ago. And I buried the, the, first of all, I transplanted it out into the garden. I planted a hole, I dug a hole about maybe a foot and a half deep, way down into the soil. Planted it way deep until nothing but the suckers were showing. And I dug trenches and laid the suckers down into the ground and I did the trench method. So I did deep planting, which is one step. Uh, trench method with the suckers, I buried them underneath the soil and covered them up and watered them. That's the trench method. That combined uh, together along with the pruning and shaping is what we call the praxis method. That's what somebody started calling it and it kind of stuck. I grew this that year and it put out enough tomatoes for me to have enough tomatoes all summer long and all winter long all the way into the next year. I had crazy amounts of uh, tomatoes and it looked like this huge hydra of a plant. It looked like I had a whole bunch of tomato plants in one uh, three foot by three foot bed. It was only one plant one single plant and the root system went way down to the center of the earth. It was an extreme success. So um, I like the boxcar willy. I'm going to grow that this year in, in a bed out in full sun and I'll show you how I do it. But for right now I'm starting it indoors. This scraggly looking weird thing is called Rapunzel. Rapunzel I saw online. Somebody uh, mentioned it to me and I had to check it out. So I looked online and I saw the tomatoes it puts out. Go to, go to Google and type in Rapunzel tomato. You know, like Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel tomato. And look at what it shows you. It puts out these long cascading tresses of tomatoes like you would not believe. It is beautiful. It's a delicate, beautiful, uh, I don't know how the tomatoes taste, but I know it's a nice looking tomato. I thought it would be more compact, but I don't know if I'm doing something really right or re really wrong. But this plant is growing out and up until filming day today, it was growing straight up. I picked it up to bring it down here to show you and it just goes bleh, and it lays down because the branches are, I mean, come on, the branches are just so heavy. I can't imagine. I was surprised that they were self-supporting up until today. But what I'm going to have to do is trim these down and I thought I'd go over it with you. So if you're starting your tomatoes indoors, you can uh, see how I do it so that you won't be quite so afraid to do yours. Come on over here and let's start pruning these things back a little bit, okay? This is Boxcar Willie. Uh, I started it from seed in a, one of those small cups and then I transplanted it into a larger pot, I think a six inch pot, a small six inch pot, and then I transplanted it into this container. And each time I transplant, I bury it deeper to bury some of the stem so that roots will grow out of the stem. That you didn't see, but here's what it looks like now. You can see, let me bring it up so that you can see really close. This is where I pruned it and it sent out a side sucker there and a sucker there, and a sucker there. What a sucker is, all a sucker is, is another plant growing off the main plant. And uh, you may hear that suckers drain energy off the plant and they don't produce anything. Hogwash. I will tell you right now, flat to your face, that is a 
bald faced lie and it is it it, it no <laughs> okay no i'm trying to use these these words and i can't, it's just a big honk and no with a capital n suckers are the best thing that can possibly happen to your plant if you grow it right all right now tomatoes are famous for putting down roots all right this pot is no doubt filled with roots that's a good thing now uh, tomatoes are vines yeah, people grow them upright and cage them up but that's not their natural growth pattern what they normally do is put out suckers fall down to the ground and put down roots everywhere the stem touches the ground that's how they get around and they can be grown as a perennial forever if you keep them warm and give them sun. They'll, they'll never die. So, um, it, uh, but I have winter, so my plants are gonna die unless I drag them inside, which I don't wanna do. Now, I started this from seed, it's growing up. I don't really go for looks when it uh, comes to growing plants indoors. I'm just, uh, well, vegetable plants. I'm preparing them for outdoors, all right? So I want to give them the best possible start. So they're not going to look all perfect inside, but that's that's okay with me. They're going to start looking good outside. And plus, even outside, what do I care? As long as it's putting out tomatoes, I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> okay, now one pattern that Box Carwelli and some other tomatoes will have. Some will have short, sturdy branches like uh, the Prax cherry. Some of you are growing that. You notice that those branches look nothing like this. They're strong, they're sturdy. You could hang a swing from those things. That's a good thing. A lot of these, especially Romas, will have this sweeping long branch. Now that's a lot of weight when you're growing indoors because you don't have optimum conditions. So the plant is not going to be as strong inside as it is outside. So one trick that I've done over the years is you take these long branches, cut half of it off. There's more than enough energy in that branch to support that plant. I go around, I do this. What it does is it removes the weight from the top of the plant. Because what's going to happen is if you have all these branches and it's growing up, eventually it's going to fall over. You're going to have to stake it up. No need to do that. You can buy yourself. See, I already did one over here. You can buy yourself lots of time and save yourself some time by cutting half your branches off here. Voila there this plant just lost a lot of weight and it's going to go a lot longer and also it takes these branches off so it doesn't shade the ones below we want those ones to catch up with the, these ones here there really is not much else that i need to do here since everything's growing nice now if you're growing them inside to get them ready to go outside you're going to want to remove the flower bud see here's a flower bud right here this thing wants to put out a flower ah uh, not in my house you don't snip I do have time for it to put out a flower, but what happens is when it puts out a flower, it makes a fruit, and then once it starts making a tomato, it's not that it stops growing, but it diverts a lot of energy into producing that. And I want that energy right now to grow into producing, oh, I forgot this one, to producing green growth and thicker stems. I want these stems to be super strong, ready to go outside. I'm going to get a better start. I'll forego the one or two tomatoes I can get now for the balance which would be stronger healthier plant when it comes time to put it outside and there we go box car willy got its haircut no problem at all let's go let's go on over to something that's a little bit more of a challenge his sister rapunzel yeah well <laughs> it was growing up until I started to film today. And then when I had to move it, I disturbed it. Now, um, but that's okay, that's okay. We're gonna fix this. And this is actually a good thing. I don't want the branches going straight up. I want them to go out because like I mentioned, when I take this outside, I want lateral suckers, which is what these are, lateral branches, so that I can plant this deeper. The top of the soil, when I take it outside, will probably be up here. So basically everything here is gonna be underneath the ground growing roots. This thing right here will be huge by the time I take it outside. I'm gonna take it out that way, have it go out laterally, and I'm gonna have three plants at least growing out underneath the soil, and then where they come out at the edge of the bed, I'll turn them like this, and there's the new plant. So it'll have the benefit of all of this, even more so, it'll be longer. All of that for roots, all of these main roots, all supporting that plant, this plant, and another plant you got a huge amount of benefit going that way. So, this is not gonna be needed underneath the ground. And by the way, this is growing so fast, it's starting to fall over. So I'm gonna take that down. I noticed that on Rapunzel, it starts out, let me show you this. It starts out with this, 
and it puts out the leaves not quite as robust as boxcar willy. And I see the lightness on the inside, which made me think, well, do I have a nitrogen problem? Turns out I don't have a nitrogen problem. That's just the way this thing decided to grow. Okay, it may grow differently for you, but this is how it's growing for me. And since it's growing so fast, and it's actually putting out flowers, let me pinch this off. I wanna show you the flower buds up close, and I don't want it to flower indoors. I just don't want that. I could let it do it, but I choose not to. And I'm sure outdoors they're gonna put out bigger trusses of flowers, but here we go, see? It put out this flower and then this one, and then it's growing this large bundle that I believe is just gonna keep going down into a large amount of cherry tomatoes. I hope they taste as good as this plant is gonna look, because if it does, I'm definitely saving seeds from this thing. All right, I'm gonna take off this branch, I'm not cutting off just half branches because I know that this is going to go underneath the soil. No need to leave those on here. Now let's see, since I really only need this much to have leaves, I'm going to go ahead and take all of these off. Now what's going to happen is this just lightened it up. See how it went up there? That's good. Now it's got all this weight. If it's laying on top of here, it really isn't having to support itself. Now that it's actually supporting itself, it's going to grow some more strength here and here. Now, look at this one over here. Let me move this over so you can see. This thing just, limp noodle. Nope, can't have that. This is how Ray grows his stuff. This is what I do, folks. Now this one, of course, is not gonna stand back up. Look at this. It's just a total mess. But what I'm gonna do is remove all of that. And when I put this back underneath the light, trust me, this thing is gonna start turning up and going like this, up towards the light. But I'm not gonna prop this up. I'm not gonna put it on a stick or anything like that because I want it to go out like this. So I'm just gonna let it hang like that and eventually it'll try to grow up and it's gonna develop more strength along the stem because this stem, I would like it ideally to be a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna let that thing go just like that. Like I said, it's not pretty, but this is production. These are for tomatoes. These aren't for show quality. This is what I, oh, there's a leaf. Yeah, I'll just leave it in there. I have uh, predatory mites in my soil to take care of the fungus gnats. And uh, so every now and then I take the old leaves, I crumble them up and I put them in the soil. And that gives the predatory mites, they're called hypoaspis miles. Those mites are so small you can barely even see them with the naked eye. They live off of decomposing matter in the soil when there's no fungus nets. Because once they kill all the fungus nets, what are they gonna do, die? So they can survive off decomposing matter in the soil. So that's why I crumble them around there. Plus, it's nature. When uh, leaves fall down, they turn into more soil. And so uh, you're literally building your soil. If you just crumble up the dead leaves, put them on top, eventually they're gonna become part of your soil. And that's a good thing, putting back into the soil. There we go, tomatoes are done. Ugly little thing, but <laughs> Good thing she's not going to prom. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Ray's tips for butchering your plants, getting them ready for spring. I guarantee you this is going to be a good-looking plant this summer. And also the boxcar willy and the peppers. They're just going through some of Ray's adjustments right now. And they're going to be just fine. But thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions concerning your indoor gardening, post them in the comment section below. I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. Next episode. I'm going to go through and show you the tropicals. I've shown you the, the vegetable garden stuff and how to do all of that fun stuff, but we also have some more exotics, you know, like our dumb canes here, our purple passions, uh, shuffleras, all kinds of other good things. Tina Turner's hair over here. And uh, I'll show you those and a few of the tips that I have for caring for those on the next episode. Tune in to the Voodoo Garden next week. Until then, this is Ray. We're out of here. Okay. These things kind of squeak. I don't like that squeak. Maybe I should oil these. Okay, everybody. Back to your respective places.